Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining our webinar today. Uh, this webinar is in, at the request of several individuals and large corporations that we have been working with, as well as the government, that have reached out to us and said, hey, we're, we're rolling out Microsoft Teams. Uh, we'd like to learn a little more about how some of the Microsoft project management solutions could be better deployed and made visible through Microsoft Teams. So what we're going to do today is actually walk you through some experiences and some good practices that we've realized really over the last couple of months as organizations have rolled out PPM. Um, and uh, what they're doing around Microsoft Teams as well. A little bit of background for those who aren't familiar with Progility. We are a specialized uh, solution provider in the project portfolio management, enterprise solution uh, execution management, and business intelligence space. Uh, typically, clients come to us when they have one of three challenges. The first is they can't easily explain what's going on across all their projects. They often don't know what resources are working and what work. And finally, they have a very hard time getting consistent reports and metrics out to make project program and portfolio based decisions. They tend to rely on us as we are specialists in the PPM space. Uh, we've been doing this for the last 15 years and we do have deployment and consulting services on the left around Microsoft PPM or Project Online, integrating that with line of business systems, deploying what we call strategic execution management systems which are top level governance systems to allow you to run scenarios and models as well as doing Power BI and analytics. We do have some pre-built software solutions in the middle called Hammerhead that can provide it full access to all of your online data in a data warehouse, provide you with the ability to do reporting out of Power BI in your PPM system, assist with migration from on-premise to online, as well as have a unique connection between Project Online and your DevOps system, Azure DevOps, if you're looking to do any kind of a waterfall and agile connectivity. Finally, we do offer ongoing support services called Expert Care as well as ongoing training. So if you do have needs in some of these areas, please feel free to reach out. All of the webinars we are delivering are available on our Vimeo channel and channels. The, the one today is on our fall series. We're doing a lot of training and this is gonna be actually a summary of some of the capabilities that are available through Microsoft Teams and Project. Uh, the upcoming webinar schedule, we're doing these weekly. We are focusing on Microsoft Project reporting in a couple of the sessions. We're doing some deep dives based off some feedback from clients on how to do better scheduling and creating custom views. Uh, assisting with working with resources in Microsoft Project, which is a huge pain point for a lot of organizations, and also talking about how you can go about doing specific custom field creation. So hopefully you can join us for some of these webinars. But let's talk about today. We're really focused on a couple of things. We're going to first back up and talk about some of the core project management challenges we're seeing in this day and age. And things have really changed over the last 10 years. While project management is absolutely critical on any project, we have new methodologies are in place, people are working differently, everybody's working remotely, so we're going to talk about those challenges. Then we're going to talk about what the right tool for the job is. Microsoft offers multiple solutions in the Office 365 cloud around project management. We're going to talk about what those are and the different options there. Then we're going to foc focus right in on our topic today, which is about how you can have an integrated project management solution using Teams as well as Project and Microsoft Planner. Uh, we'll give you a demonstration of that solution and show you some examples of what it would look like to start up a new project and have this integration happen, what kind of a project in its life cycle would look like, and finally, what a more uh, complex development project would look like being managed through project management tools in Microsoft as well as Microsoft Teams. Uh, towards the end, we will give you some guidance on some things to consider if you're going down this road, as well as good practices if you're thinking about actually implementing this type of technology. And then we'll answer some questions. So if you could just uh, kind of jot down your questions or hold them uh, locally, we're going to open the Q&A manager at the end, and then Sarah, Sarah Howard, who has joined us from Progility today, will be reading through those. We'll hopefully get answers to some of your questions. Got it. So let's talk about some of the business needs we've seen out there around project management. These have really been morphing over the last couple of years. Uh, the first of those is really project collaborations become a lot more challenging because you've got projects that are being executed across different functional business areas and physical boundaries. You've got people that don't have backgrounds in certain areas starting to work on projects where they're assigned to because resources are needed. There's fewer resources to do more work. And what we're seeing is really the overuse of email and technologies like uh, task lists and sites and drives and OneDrive and documents are in SharePoint. Everything is in different places. And the problem is you don't have all your data in one place, which really limits your ability to have measurable tracking and goals around your different projects. Also, dates and milestones we're finding are slipping, whether we're in waterfall projects uh, or we're in agile projects, dates are pushing out and budgets are being exceeded, which has always been a challenge on projects. I think the statistic is something like 75% of all projects are either over schedule or fail completely. Uh, information is often distributed across different locations with very limited controls. We're sending information around. We should really have that in a central controlled repository so we can do things like audit and compliance around it. 
Uh, we're finding multiple tools are in use, as well as multiple methodologies. So we've got development teams using agile tools. We have traditional waterfall teams using traditional project management tools. How do we bridge this world and bring this information together? And finally, we're finding that management always wants, and this is a consistent requirement, that top level view of what's going on to make more critical decision making across their projects, programs, and resources. So what we're seeing is there's really a convergence between project management as well as collaboration and the need to have all that in one place. And when you start plugging different components into different systems, you, you kind of de-unify that whole process. So when we look at the project management and collaboration components, there's really different pieces of information we're going to be capturing. On the project management side, we've got data. And that data can be made up of project schedules, which are made up of different tasks, assignments, as well as resources, which are going to be performing work on those projects. We're also going to be capturing information on dates as well as milestones so we can track deadlines and report on those and roll those up, as well as costs if we're doing any kind of cost-based loading of resource schedules or just total costs on projects. We're going to want to capture this information to see how far off of our plan we are. Finally, we're going to capture lots of project metadata. That would be sub-information about projects such as the department, the charge code, the sponsor, the business unit, the lifecycle phase. So that's all data we're going to be capturing about our projects. On the collaboration side, we're really going to be focused on capturing different kinds of artifacts, and those would be documents or any kind of templates we're going to be using throughout the project management lifecycle, uh, lists of information, things like action items, meeting minutes, decisions, decision trees, also risks and issues, which are components of projects so that we can triage and understand risks as well as go in and understand and manage issues, problems once they occur. We'll be capturing, as I mentioned, action items, which are actions that come out of things like status meetings or delivery meetings as well as formal deliverables, which can be points in time in the project, like a milestone, specific deliverables or documents, and any other content. So when you start to think about it within a project management lifecycle, we're going to have data, we're going to have artifacts, and the real goal here is to provide easy access, to provide alignment between projects, resources, tasks, and portfolios, to have consistency across the organization, to provide that top-level transparency, as well as executive visibility and insight. We always say it's all about picking the right tool for the job. So within the Microsoft suite, we're going to be focused on different components here. One of the core components is that Microsoft Project Online suite at the top middle, which is going to provide for better structure around your projects, your resources, your tasks, and your work, as well as your programs and your portfolios. Teams is going to be pulled in to really provide you with a way to organize and visualize the information across your project management lifecycle. Power BI is the tool we're going to use to mine and access that data to do analytics, trending, and reporting. Planner is going to be that kind of bottoms up tool for business folks to update their status on the different activities. And then the rest of Office 365, including SharePoint Online, Active Directory Exchange, all these pieces are going to come together. It's really about choosing the right tool for the job. And these tools are all really designed to work together. And we're going to show you a solution that actually integrates them all together. Around the Microsoft project management specific solutions, there's several different solutions that are in Office 365 we wanted to walk you through. And it all maps to the level of standardization and then the use cases you're looking to map to. From a standardization perspective on the left, we go from our ad hoc to our occasional or part-time project manager to semi-structured projects and programs to structured programs, portfolios, and enterprise PMOs. And at the base level at all, from an ad hoc perspective, a lot of organizations are using Planner to do this. This is where they're doing visualization of tasks, uh, sharing those with different team members, updating tasks from has it started, is it in progress, or is it done? Kind of an agile way to manage your activities and tasks on informal projects. Microsoft released a, a new technology called Project for the Web in November of last year. And it's really designed and targeting the occasional or the part-time project manager. Uh, these folks are folks that are really across the business, not necessarily in IT or formal PMOs, that are has a part of their job manage projects, but have a day job as well. They may be tasked with managing an HR project, a marketing project, maybe an operations project, and they need quick and easy ways to organize their activities, to track tasks, to visualize those tasks, and to, to actually share those tasks with different team members, but don't necessarily want the rigor of a formal project portfolio management tool. At the top level of this, we have for more semi-structured and structured project portfolio management, Project Online, which is Microsoft's portfolio management, demand management, resource management engine, as well as it has time tracking and task tracking, includes that issue and risk management, all the collaboration, dashboards and reporting, and integration with line of business systems. Think of this as your formal project portfolio management solution. So it's really about picking the right tool for the job. And the good news is there's probably a good fit for a tool within your enterprise for different groups. 
support structured IT projects, large programs, even new product development, Project Online is a great fit. It provides that structure, that methodology, and the process to really plan and manage large projects and portfolios. Project for the Web is a great fit for the occasional business user who is managing projects but doesn't need the rigor or the structure or frankly the training and the complexity of a formal Project Online solution. And finally, Planner is really best for kind of the business folks that are not really in a project-based environment. But what we're going to show you next is really an integrated solution. And this is something we've come up with based off of feedback from a lot of our clients that are today using Microsoft Teams. And they're using Teams for collaboration, for meetings, for structured kind of uh, bringing information together. And they want to organize things, not only just collaboration and meetings, but also projects. How can I use Teams to better organize my projects? The great thing is behind the scenes, we can use Project Online. Project Online is going to provide that structured environment for project and portfolio management for creating templates, for doing our resource assignments, forecasting and planning, as well as doing any kind of business intelligence, trending, analytics, status reporting in a consistent measured way. So we'll leverage the best of Project Online for project portfolio management. And finally, Planner comes into play here too. We find most organizations are using it to organize activities. And sometimes on a project you have business users that don't necessarily need to go into the project management system, but they're still doing work on a project. And the use case really is for those formal projects, users are going to come into Project Online as they do, maybe interface with it through Teams, which is what you'll see. But business users are people that are just doing quick updates and status where they're not doing formal timesheets. They can use Planner. They can visualize and update different activities and tasks, and then they can actually go in and status those and send those back to the project manager who's going to approve and apply those changes. So if you think about it from an overall integrated solution perspective, what we're talking about here is at the top level you have Microsoft Teams. Teams is going to be really the aggregation level. Think of it as the window into all of your project management information. And it's going to help you organize this in a series of tabs. And those tabs are going to be made up of data from the underlying systems we talked about. The first tab is going to be about files and documents and deliverables, which are stored in SharePoint Online as a part of Project Online. They're all visible through Microsoft Teams for that project. It's also going to set up the issue and risk lists for each project, which are again stored in SharePoint Online, but visible through Teams. So think of the documents and the artifacts and all the different lists of information can be updated through a Teams interface into the SharePoint Online component that lives in Project Online. Project Online is still going to be our full featured engine to do our project intake, our demand, but also our project management. When we start building out a schedule, assigning resources, tracking work, that is Project Online working. We're going to visualize that information and be able to update that through a Microsoft Teams user interface. So again, Teams becomes the wrapper around our project manage our projects. Planner is the tool we're going to be using to actually do our informal task tracking where we can assign activities from a project to business users, and those business users can go in through Teams or the, uh, the Microsoft uh, Planner app and update their progress, and then that goes back to the project manager for approval. And finally, our reporting is going to happen through Power BI. This is where we can easily connect in and visualize information and report on it. Again, the report is going to come through Teams. The back end is Power BI tapping into Project Online. So we've really integrated the solution to come up with an integrated architecture for this that makes it very quick and easy, that makes it easy for the end user to visualize the information, and very easy for a project manager to get started through some automation that you're going to see today. So at this point, we're actually going to hop over into our demonstration, and we're going to give you a demonstration of what the solution looks like based off of current use cases and use patterns. And this is deploying some of the technology, deploying project online, and using the best of Teams and Planner to address these requirements. So I'm going to start my life here in Project Online, and I've come into a portfolio view. So I'm now playing the role of someone who's maybe in the PMO or a project manager starting out a new project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go submit a new project and start the process of making the collaboration connection happen. I'm going to go into create a new project, and this is where you'll see all the different project types I have. Uh, for purpose of today, I'm just going to be picking a project type. I'm going to just do a scoping project. So I want to do a very quick uh, level of effort here, start a new project. We're going to call this our... Uh, scoping for the updated migration of our PPM system. I can give the project a description. I can give the project a start date. Let's say we're going to start towards the end of August. And then I can answer other information, such as what department is potentially going to do the work. So maybe it's for IT operations, legal, finance. And then the other information, what part of a program is it a part of? Maybe it's part of a program we have or a portfolio, maybe this is part of our product enhancements. But then importantly, I'm going to come down to the bottom, and I'm going to have a little, one of my options is going to be 
do I want to make this Teams and Planner integrated? I'm going to click yes. And by doing that, once I submit my project request into the queue, it's going to go through the process of creating that potential project, that new project. And then it's going to create a landing page for that particular project. And now you'll see I've got what's called a project detail page. So now I've got my project in the planning phase. I can capture information such as what is the work type, project operational administrative, give that a description and start to capture more information. What is the priority of the project, low, medium, high? What are my estimated costs? Maybe this is going to cost me $25,000 to do the scoping, but I think we're going to see about $35,000 in cost reduction. Will help us develop a solid business case for migration. And then any other information I want to capture about that potential project. And that'll all be captured here in Project Online through the browser. I can also go in and start to capture information such as my project costs, the strategic impact of my project, all the typical things I would capture in my project management system. They're all going to be here. I can start updating my project status if I want to. And this is where I'm going to be able to update status. But importantly, I've got a project schedule. So this is where I'm going to start building out my work plan for this particular particular project. Okay, Let's go to the schedule real quick. And now you'll see I've got certain activities. I've got investigation, business analysis, and it's taken my start date of 824, and it's laid it out. Looks like we're going to finish about 1020. Now, one of the first things I want to do is I'm going to uh, throw away on save changes here. One of the things I want to do is start to assign people on the business side who can actually access the project as I'm building out the plan to provide me with some updates. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to go in and I'm going to start to add resources. I'm going to build my team. So you see in this case I've got analysts and project managers. My template is telling me the types of resources I need. But from a product engineer perspective, I'm going to go in and say what engineers do I have? And I'm going to say I've got this guy, Tom Henry. I'm going to replace the engineer with Tom. I'm going to click Save and Close. And now, wherever I had an engineer on my particular project, I'm now going to have Tom assigned to that particular activity. And this is going to help me do some resource forecasting and resource planning in my project schedule. So you'll see now I've got Tom assigned to a specific activity. And maybe what I want to do is say as we're doing our investigation, I'm actually just going to assign all this work to Tom. So I'm going to assign Tom that task. And I'm going to say it looks like it's about 40 hours for Tom. And then as I go through my business analysis, I'm going to say, again, I'm going to put Tom on this. And that's going to be for about 96 hours. And then finally, my third task here, I'm going to assign to Tom as well. I'm going to say, you know, I still need a tester, but I'm going to put Tom on this. And that activity, which was forecasted at 40, is now at 40 hours. So I've created my work plan. I'm assigning the resource I may want to do the work, but where I'm going to start making this connection between project and planner, it's going to tie into teams, is over here. So now I have fields called planner sync. And this says, do I want to do traditional project task tracking, like I would in project web app with my tasks or my timesheets, or do I want these tasks to be more business user friendly for updates? I'm going to say for these three, you know, Tom is really, he works in the finance group, so I just need to know, is he partially done? Is he fully done? When is he going to be done with these things so I can do a little bit of forecasting? And that's where I'm going to use the planner sync. It's traditionally tasks that are not in a timesheet that are coming from a business user, or I can even set a standard, say 25, 50, 75, 100, and get those updates from planner. I can also select which planner bucket I want these activities to go into. So now I can actually select the specific planner bucket that I'm going to be using. In this case, these are in planning. This one's in initiation. And this one is in actually uh, execution. Okay. So now I've got these activities, and I've got my project schedule I've built out. I may want to share this with my management team. So all I'm going to do is highlight the tasks. I'm going to say add to timeline. Now I've got a visual timeline of the project that says, hey, if we start this project on the 24th, it looks like it's going to end sometime around the 21st, and I've already got some folks I know that are going to work on this project. What I'm going to do is I'm going to publish that out, just like I would with any project in Project Online, and a couple things are going to happen. Number one, it's going to submit that to the queue. It's going to alert Tom that there are new activities on this particular project. Uh, it's gone out and has created the document repository in SharePoint, as well as the list of risks and issues that are out there. And what I can do then is just close this up. I'm going to say close. I'm going to check it in. And then that becomes a 
project that's now in our queue that we're going to start planning and managing around. So that's really the first step is starting in Project Online and kicking off that process. And one of the nice things is you'll see an email notification has come in, or it will come in here any minute now, that's telling me that this actual, I'm just refresh my email, that there is actually going to be a new Teams channel that's been set up, or a team, to support that in Microsoft Teams. So it's actually going through the process of creating this on the back end, and it's going to alert me when that team is actually set up. So I get an email notification, as does Tom, as do any resources I have, that they should go out to actual Microsoft Teams to start collaborating on this potential project. So it can really start with Project Online and kick off into Teams, but you'll also see those tasks that I've assigned can actually push out into Planner, which is also available in the Teams. So we're making Teams really our hub with Project Online behind the scenes doing all the work. That makes sense. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go into Teams. And now I've gone into Teams, and this is Microsoft Teams. I'm going to make this big on my screen. And now you'll see in Teams, I've got a couple things going on. Number one, you know, it's created a team for this project. And then it's going to create the document library, as I mentioned, the document or document libraries. And these are actually created in SharePoint Online. Um, teams out of the box creates a file library. Um, it's actually stored in SharePoint as well. But this project document library is actually automatically stored in the SharePoint site behind every project in Project Online. So users can come in and quickly and easily start updating documents and access templates. It is going to actually show me the list of issues and risks. So if there are any issues and risks, I want to kick off that process. But maybe we've already identified a risk on this particular project. So I can go in, and you'll see right through Teams, I can interact with all this data. I can say I've got a new risk. Funding may be held off based upon COVID-19. I can say who owns this risk. I can assign it to somebody else, Sonny or Tom. I can say the status and the category. This is all the traditional project online functionality that's happening through SharePoint on the back end. Probability is a five, impact is an eight, cost to mitigate this is $1,000. Maybe we can go out and we can actually get a bridge loan from our CFO for it and give it a description, a mitigation, all the core things we would want to do to log a risk or an issue on a project. That's all here. Okay. So we've got that now. Then we've got our detailed schedule. So this is actually where, this is a view into that project schedule that we've gone out and created. And you'll see that's all here, 825, 1021. We've got all that information here. So this is where actually we can interact with the project schedule. And we're doing all this through Teams, remember that. So if the project manager had permission, they could go in and edit the project, change workflow, change duration, change start dates, change even resources if I wanted to. It's all quickly and easily accessible through Microsoft Teams. It can even filter on different views. So if I'm a manager and I wanted to see a milestone view of the different activities, here's the milestones. Or if I want to see a view of the resources I'm thinking about using, here's a listing of all the resources, the costs, and what the total cost is going to be based off the resources and the forecast that I have. So what it's done, it's actually brought that in and automatically set up the team. It's actually created these tabs automatically. And it's also pulling in, from a planner perspective, some of the key actions and activities. And you'll see Planner will come up now. And we can see we've got the different activities we created in that project schedule. Business analysis, planning, investigation. And we can actually look at this. This is actually Planner coming through Teams. We can look at the progress. And we can start to drag these over in progress, investigation. I think we already did this. So maybe we've already completed this. And it'll cross that out. And we can also go in and say, well, what's the progress? Not started, in progress, done. Put a description behind it. And we can see the specific task or activity, as well as any details behind it as well. Those tasks have gone from that project schedule that I denoted I wanted to be planner tasks, move them directly into planner. Whereas now, as a user, if I'm Tom, Todd Henry, I can come in and actually go in and update the progress of those, move those over to a completed state, or update the status of them. It's going to pull all this information together, and that all comes through that team that was created when I created that project. As I'm adding new resources to my project, it's also going to be adding them to that team. They'll be notified, and they can come in and interact with the data in the same way. So they can see the data. They can see the content, such as project documents. Then I'm going to show you kind of a project in progress next and show you what that looks like. 
But that really helps do a couple of things. Number one, it saves the project manager time in having to set up a team, start to assign people, and making sure it's really consistent. So you have consistent tabs that are linked to the right places on the back end. This is all happening in an automated fashion based off some technology we've got running behind the scenes. And that can help with your setup. Kind of jumping over now to a project in progress, this is a project that's actually been, uh, been in place for a couple of months. And you can see here, if I go in, I've got the same kind of tabs. So I've got project documents. And this is a project that has a change control library, weekly status reports are tracked here, it's got contracts tracked here. So all of the things that would typically happen during a project lifecycle have been built out now. It's being managed and it's all visible and changeable through Teams. A lot of organizations we work with like to actually use OneNote Online, which is integrated with SharePoint, for every project to capture all the non-structured content, all the status meeting minutes, all the action items that come out of a meeting, and then those get assigned to different individuals. The team notebook is fully accessible here, and it can all be updated and changed with notes from this week's meeting. Multiple people can actually update and access this information here as well, again, all through Teams. The data is all stored on the back end in SharePoint Online and Project Online, and this is actually OneNote Online working. That project schedule is quickly and easily accessible, so as a manager I can get in and start to drill into specific activities, milestones, start to look at red, yellow, green on, on actions, even look at if there are any risks or issues associated with certain activities. The data, again, is coming from Project Online, but I'm surfacing it all. And we're finding a lot of enterprises are using Teams kind of as this front end or the wrapper around all your project information to quickly and easily allow it to be accessed. The risks and issues are accessible here as well. So here are all the risks for this project. Here are all the issues for the project. Here's where we can actually have specific lists of information, like this organization actually has change control across all of its SharePoint sites. We want to track changes and report off those. We can actually go and modify and even add new changes here if we wanted to as well. And a form pops up, so we can actually log a change request right here in Teams. One of the nice things about Teams is that it also allows the project manager to actually insert dynamic data. So if we wanted to actually provide visibility into the weekly status report that's being generated in Power BI, this is a great way to do it, to actually drive the status meeting through Teams with the data on the back end. In this case, we've got a status report that shows the accomplishments, the plan, the milestones, the activities and tasks, a description. And you'll see down at the bottom, we have different tabs. This is Power BI working through Teams natively. We can start looking at all the project tasks that are late, start assigning those to individuals or understand why they're, they're late, look at the completed tasks, take a look at what's coming this week and do next week. And finally, we can look at information such as those issues and risks in more of a visual report. As well as that project schedule, we can get a summary level so management knows where we are at a life cycle or a phase level. So this is great. It really helps you visualize the information you have in Power BI with Project Online running behind the scenes. Also, from an integration perspective, we're finding a lot of organizations have finance and accounting systems where they want to bring the data in and make it visible for the project teams, but don't necessarily want to do complex systems integration. And this is a great way you can actually use the system. This is actually a power app that was built to allow you to actually pull data from your finance system to look at the budget. And it actually allows users to go in and request new budget line items. And this would actually go through an approval process where it would go to a manager, they would need to approve it, and then you get a budget line item, and then you can go and actually apply something to your project schedule with the project manager. So again, teams can be used to pull this information together, and this is a pretty good example of what that might look like for a project in progress. Um, you know, finally, looking at more development-related tasks, we have organizations that are more agile in nature. They're doing agile projects. Well, what if you could get in and actually start looking at you know, your DevOps information? That's in Azure DevOps. What I can do is sign into Azure DevOps here, pop up real quick. And then I've got my development teams maybe working in Azure DevOps behind the scenes. And now what you'll see is all the features that my development team are working on are visible right here in Teams. And I can see from a closed perspective, we've already deployed an account management feature, a lead management feature, access and authentication is being resolved. And then finally, integration with Outlook and opportunity management. Maybe we're rolling out our CRM system, our new customer contact management system, we can actually see this. And if we had permission, we could actually move activities around or features into different stages, as well as different activities or tasks that are in specific Azure DevOps boards. We can see a dashboard view of all the Azure DevOps activities we have. And this will actually come from Power BI. 
we can actually go in and select the specific project, that CRM project, and now we have across Azure DevOps all the work items, and I can see everything that's maybe new or that's active right now, and I can see who owns those activities. Is it a feature or a user story? And the specifics behind it. So if you're trying to bridge those worlds of the agile and waterfall world, you can allow people to work in the tools they want and surface that data or that information through teams. Finally, if you wanted to do any more complex reporting, this is actually an example of a sprint-based report that's pulling data from Azure DevOps. And you can actually get down to a sprint level and look at things like capacity, your sprint goals, your actions and activities, different remaining work, operational and sprint goals. So if you're doing any kind of reporting around your DevOps environment, feel confident that you can actually provide that information and make it visual here in Teams, as well as work items. If you want to get down to a work item or a work package level on specific activities, you can actually see the entire set of work items, your features, your user stories, and actually drill directly into those in Azure DevOps right here through Teams. So Teams, again, is providing that wrapper with whatever kind of project you're working on, it allows for consistent standardization and updates of the activities. And if I were to go back again to that project we created, the scoping project, and once I go back here, so let's say I had made some changes to Planner, and I wanted to apply those, maybe I'm moving different phases over like we did before. Let's move our phase back here. What I can do is I can go back into Project Online, and then I can go into the specific project I was working on as a project manager, now putting on the project manager hat. I'll go back to my scoping project here. So I've got scoping. Okay. Software devices, I've got this, I've got my scoping project. And what I can do is when I click into any of my projects, here we go. I have a button that's now in Project Web App to get planner updates. So if I now know that my team members have provided updates back on that project, I can actually click on Get Planner Updates and you'll see a little line will show up. It's in the queue. Wait a couple minutes and those updates will now be updated directly into my schedule. So we can actually pull those updates back from Planner as well, but we do it with the project manager driving the process. It's not independent of the project manager at all. So you want to know what the impact is going to be if you were to go forward and, and apply those changes. You could simply do that. And then once I refresh my page here in a second, I will see some updates come back from the team members. So if you want to think about really uh, Planner and Teams and Project Online working together, there's a lot, a lot of great possibilities for these tools to be really well integrated together. And what we're showing you here is out of the box with configuration as well as some, some bolt-ons we have. So, so as mentioned, you know, Teams is really great, and what you can do from a project management perspective is really use Teams as that user interface for all project management information. It allows the user to go in and very quickly and easily access everything they need without having to click through Project Web App into different places. And what we can do with the solution is auto-create a team based on the projects, and then once that's done, once that project is created, it will create the link for the documents, the schedule, the issues, the risks, as well as Planner. It'll auto, also auto-assign team members to the team once they're assigned to the actual project. And it'll also start linking in things like Power BI dashboards and status reports. But it is that two-way integration. So when we talk about that integration, you can start in a Microsoft project schedule. You can denote specific activities you want to move over into Planner. Clearly not everything in a schedule belongs there. You want things with more detail or, or timesheets. And then those tasks will flow over into Planner, which is then accessible through Teams Team members can go and pick up those activities and status them there, or they can do them on their phone or their tablet, wherever they are. There's a mobile device, a mobile app for Teams. And that two-way synchronization will really provide you with the ability to actually get updates to project online tasks in Teams uh, and Planner. And then users can update in Planner and send those back to project online. And we can even set up in the background how we want that statusing to occur. Is it percent complete or is it purely started in progress done? This is all also really great if you have agile projects where you have people that are uh, working in an agile format where they're never going to tell you I did 25 or 30 hours against an activity. They may be updating a specific sprint or a specific feature or a specific work item. Have them do it in Planner and send it back to you in Project. At least you have visibility into who's working on it, when it may finish, and what the resource is that's, that's designated to the actual activity. It can really help kind of bring those worlds together. 
So just overall from a solution value perspective, hopefully you saw that what we showed you today can really help you first and foremost drive better consistency. Give everybody access to information in a consistent way with a consistent user interface people are familiar with in Teams. It'll help save you time. You don't have to click four or five or six different places to get to information. It'll also help you, as I just mentioned, get task updates from your non-technical project managers. More and more we see business people working on projects that aren't used to using project management systems. Well, allow them to go into Planner to provide those updates. And as a project manager, I just know exactly where things are. I don't have to pick up the phone or wait for the status meeting. It's also going to reduce the manual work that's required to link these two tools, these three tools together. If every time you create a project, you're reliant on the PM to go create the team, assign the people, create the linkages, create the tabs, that can take time and it can lead to inconsistency or frustration by the end user. A little bit of automation can go a long way here and actually help you centralize it. If they're already using plan, um, teams to collaborate on a day-to-day -day basis, this is going to flow with their daily workflow. It's going to improve that visibility across all your projects and the work in one place and allow you to really take the make best use of the Microsoft products on the back end. And it does provide that single user interface to unify all your project management information across the different Microsoft applications we talked about. Finally, and most importantly, you know, management can say, what's it going to cost me? Well, the good news is we've got most of this stuff in-house already. It's going to help you leverage existing investments you have in the Microsoft technology stack. So you're not starting from scratch. You're actually building based on something you already have in place. So it's a really nice, nice capability. If you are thinking go about going down this road and integrating these, these tools into Teams, we do have some deployment considerations. The first thing is you want to identify, most importantly, what are your business requirements at a high level for project management. If you don't have a project management system in place yet, think about that first and then think about Teams. Teams isn't going to drive the project management structure. The project management structure is going to drive what you do in Teams. It's the other way around. So think about those high-level requirements. Also, you want to really determine who your user base is and what your reporting audience is. Teams may not be the best user interface for everybody. You know, For an executive, you may want to actually just send them out the, uh, a, a PDF or a PowerPoint or a direct link to a Power BI report whereas a project manager may want to go into Microsoft Project, whereas a team member may fit nicely into Teams. It just depends on the user base and the reporting audience, who gets to see what information. But at the end of the day, it's all in one system. You also want to partner with a part of your organization that has some needs. You know, If you're in a healthcare organization, you're rolling out maybe an update to your, your uh, ERS system or your, your Epic system, maybe pilot with them if they have some big needs. Think of a big project or a big program that has needs build your solution around them, and then start to roll that out to other parts of the organization. Piloting can be very, very successful. Additionally, you also want to think about deploying this incrementally to different groups. So if you've got a central PPM solution and you've got other groups that want it, capture their needs and requirements, map it over, configure the system, then roll it out to them. New groups are going to have new requirements, and you want to be able to capture those unless you're going kind of big bang across the enterprise. And We also highly recommend you keep it very consistent and a very simple structure. Don't try to over-engineer this. Focus really on your templates, your resources, your different types of projects, and the different kinds of reports you need to get out of there. For most organizations, that's a huge leap, and it can really get you a lot farther forward. And think about maturing this capability over time. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. And while the tools are really great and they work together really well, the key is getting users to actually actively use the system and update information. You also want, and we recommend this, use resource management as a driver. At the beginning, I mentioned that kind of one of the top three needs most organizations have is getting visibility into what resources are working on what work. And if you can drive that as really a key business requirement behind these systems, you can actually start to get support and funding because we're all resource constrained. We all need to know what resources are working on what work. And without that, we really have a challenge. And finally, we always recommend you partner with somebody who's experienced, who's done this before, who can help you bring these pieces together and help determine where you are maturity-wise as well as where you can get to to build a really solid roadmap and implementation plan. So, you know, when we talk about this, the different deployment components, uh, we talked about teams, we talked about project and project online, and also if you had project for the web, that could also be substituted in here as well. We also have planner, and this is licensing that you're actually going to be getting from Microsoft here. But we also have that add-on component we have from Progility that glues these pieces together. And that's a, a subscription license. It's delivered as an Azure Logic app that will be installed in your Office 365 environment and Azure environment, and then allows these different components to work together. And then if you needed assistance with the actual implementation of the solution, there's the core project online deployment, if you haven't done that yet. There's the 
deployment of the integration component, which doesn't take a heck of a lot of time. It's mainly technical in nature. It's going to plug these systems together. The setup of that and the training of your end users as well as your administrators on the actual tool usage and then the post go live support. But that's pretty much it. So if you do need help around this, definitely feel free to reach out to us and, and our team will be able to guide you. So, you know, our goal today was to give you an overview of what a, an integrated solution based off of Teams, Project Online, and Planner could look like. Hopefully we did that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to hop into the Q&A manager if you all have any questions. So if you would like more information on the solution that was shown today or any details on implementing Microsoft-based project management solution in your environment, feel free to reach out. You can reach out to Sarah Howard, who is in, on our business development team, sarah.howard at Progility.com, or myself, Rob Hirschman, one of the partners here at Progility, rob at Progility.com. We also encourage you to visit our website, Progility.com, and we have a, a pretty active blog where we post all kinds of topics and all kinds of blog posts uh, almost a couple times a month on that, as well as if you'd like to visit our Vimeo channel on Vimeo.com, uh, you'll be able to get more information there. So we appreciate everybody's time today, and we look forward to hearing from you soon. Be well.